Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I keep getting questions about my last video that said, hey, what are you going to do in response to the System D's growing uh, control and uh, the deprecation of X11 that's coming and then what happens when C Group version 1 is phased out? So, and this is partially my answer. It's as far as I can go today, but maybe it'll help explain my direction. We have time. There's, there's no need to panic and get into a rush and make bad decisions. Uh, we certainly don't. Well, we don't need that. It's Red Hat Summit 2025. That was held in Boston this week, uh, starting on May the 19th and running through today. At that show, Red Hat has already announced uh, RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10. RHEL 10. RHEL 10 is the biggest leap forward in Linux in over a decade. And we didn't just get here accidentally. Two decades of server innovations. And now, the AI era is here. And around the world, we currently deliver this capability to applications with Docker, Podman, and OpenShift today. And now we're gonna provide the same capability to the operating system. So many users over the years have told us that a big challenge in upgrading the operating system to a new version. That's the power of image mode for l Just like a smartphone, you now have a simple upgrade. But what if there's a problem? As you can see behind me, you also have a single command rollback. And so, like magic, you're back to previous version. RHEL is also delivering incredible value in the AI era. This week, we announced that RHEL Lightspeed is available in RHEL 10. RHEL Lightspeed brings AI and decades of expertise from inside Red Hat directly to RHEL users. This includes the command line assistant, which is the optional Gen AI assistant that can help with tasks. So what does that look like in action? Here's an everyday scenario I'm sure so many of you face. A service will not start. Now, how great would it be if I could just grab a Red Hatter and ask them to help me? That's what Command Line Assistant does. It analyzes the logs, determines what happened, and tells you exactly how to fix it. It's like having a RHEL expert sitting right next to you, helping you solve your issue on your system. This is how we provide AI directly to you when and where you need it. So it's clear, RHEL Lightspeed brings you a tremendous amount of Red Hat expertise. Now we're gonna take this one step further with insights as part of the Red Hat Lightspeed family. Now this gives you a portfolio of tools to help you administer Linux. Tools like Insight Image Builder, which provides recommendations for packages that are likely to be related or relevant to your image build. Another tool is the Insights Planning tool, which provides tailored information that's based on your specific REL environment. This includes intelligent release notes, details on life cycles, and then proactive insights into upcoming REL features, changes, and deprecations almost like having a roadmap show up in front of you. Imagine getting the advice you need right at your fingertips to help make you faster, more productive, and reduce risk. All so you can make smarter decisions at build time when it's typically easier and cheaper to make changes. And we're providing a platform for AI. We're continuing to build on RHEL to make it the trusted foundation for AI. RHEL is the foundation of a family of offerings, RHEL AI, OpenShift AI, and the newly announced AI inference server. And with RHEL... There are some pretty good sized changes in it, I would say. I, I'm sort of laughing but because they're huge. Uh, so yeah, we need to talk about some of that. We knew some of it was coming, right? But I don't think, I think one of them took me by surprise. So yeah, I think we need to talk about that. The first one is, the one we expected, and that was uh, X11 and Xorg gone. 
All you have is Waylon now. That doesn't mean you can't run X11 applications on it, but you will be running them through X Wayland. Uh, I think the bigger question here is there was a, I think an interview that was done by the register back in 2020 with Adam Jackson. Adam Jackson is the Red Hat uh, primary, uh, I guess you would call him the project director, project manager and developer he is the lead for the X11 effort. He's the one that's responsible for the putting the changes in and maintenance and keeping it maintained. In that interview, he said that once RHEL 10 drops, he would be transferred over full-time to work on X Whalen. What happens to X at this point? Yeah, well, that's a good question. It may be maintained for a while, but yeah, where's that support going to come from? Is is Adam doing dual duty here? Is he going to run back over to X11 when when there's when they find a CBE and fix it? Uh, I don't, I don't. That's not clear to me how that's going to work. Maybe maybe Red Hat can, exp if they're listening, maybe they can uh, answer that question. But yeah, so that's gone, and we know that that's, that was coming. No surprise there. I think the thing that was surprising was is that the other thing that was removed was support for C Group version 1. It's gone. It's, yeah. Now, if you read the release note, it doesn't exactly say that, but if you keep reading down through it, you'll notice that it says if you're running – applications with C, that need C group version one, you may experience problems with it because yeah, it's gone. It's not, it's not going to work. They are switched over to C group version two. There, I, there is such a thing as a hybrid mode where you can run both version one and version two, but they're not clear whether or not they're supporting the hybrid mode or not. So don't know, right? Don't know. And I started looking at, you know, and at X11 window managers, because they've been around the longest, they've been tested the longest, they're going to be the most stable. Or should I be moving over to the new ones that are using Wayland? Well, I don't think I have a choice. I think it's going to have to be over on Wayland uh, since X11. Well, I don't, I don't know when the date will dry up for all the other distros, but it's... Handwriting is on the wall, whether yeah, whether or not they hold out or fork it or I don't know what will happen. Hyperland looks like that's probably going to be the choice. Anyway, I've, I've come full circle now. And once I get this done, I back it up and I make sure everything's working. Let's see what happens if we install another machine that has no system D and we take our stuff and we put it over there and see how it does. This project that I'm working on, I want to call it Athena. And there's a reason for that. Actually, there's a bunch of reasons for it, but I'm only going to tell you three of them. The system was shaped from the past and it has a presence, but it also has a future. And so that's kind of why I chose the name Athena. So Athena originally was a Greek myth. Uh, Athena was the goddess of uh, wisdom, war, and handicrafts. Generally, they were weapons. Uh, they would be, you know, things that would be used in war. There's a Roman counterpart called, and her name was Minerva, uh, who's the same, has exactly the same traits and characteristics as Athena does. The second was uh, the internal code name for MIT's uh, project Athena which is the project that built X10 and X11. The third is Athena Futures, an Arthur Clarke novel that built onto the uh, 2001 series called 3001, The Final Odyssey, in which Athena, but that was a fully sentient AI machine, uh, even had the appearance of a kind of a ethereal human. So that's the third system, and now mine is the fourth, so this would be Athena 4. And so the, the plating will start after all of that, and we'll start to uh, build up the aesthetics and get it the way I envision it. I'll talk about that as I come to it, what my, you know, kind of what my intermediary goals are. But for right now, uh, it will have 
the fonts from 2001. It'll have wallpapers that I have built uh, in in order to play on the Athena uh, theme. Uh, also, my vision for Waybar and Rofi and how that will look. I think we have something that is is it connects backwards to the history that brought us here, and. And I, th and I think it future proofs us that we will test and find out if it does. And that testing isn't going to be just today. It'll continue because I have a lot more things I want to do, and we have to see if all those are going to work. Also, I don't know what the plans are for Secret Version 1 for the kernel. Eventually, it's going to get ripped. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again next time. Please. Uh, like and subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.